today I want to talk about, um, uh, I want to start us off today and talking about um, um, leading versus lagging metrics. Um, another way to say that would be habit versus outcome. And one of the things that um, that I see happen a lot of times with um, with people in general, specifically with business owners, but just really just anybody, is we tend to focus on on goals. We see, you know, so and so uh, on Instagram, this person on Facebook. We see other businesses. We see other people. We start comparing ourselves, and what ends up happening is we focus on the end. We're like, I want to have a million dollars. I want to have a business that's like this. And we just, we're looking at that endpoint. And in and my experience, every time I have focused too hard on that endpoint or the outcome, it, it ironically never happens. And so uh, there's a book called Atomic Habits that talks about this in great detail. And if you have not read that book, I highly recommend doing it. But the, the concept um, uh, is instead of focusing on the outcome that you want to have, the goal that you want to achieve, instead, you still need to have a goal. You still need to know where you want to go, right? You can, where do you want to be in a year, five years, 10 years, 50, 30 years, whatever it is, right? Write down that vision statement. It's still important. You need to know that. But instead of just making this goal, take a look at this goal and then break down what daily habits you need to do. And that's what that book um Atomic Habits is about, right? How do you create unwavering habits that when done will inevitably get you to the goal that you want in the first place? Um, you could, I mean, how many times have you heard of someone like, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds this year and they, January comes around, they go get a gym subscription and, you know, they go to the gym for a month and then they never come back. It's because they focused on the goal. So in that book, Atomic Habits, it, it you know, James Clear talks about, Instead of thinking about the goal in mind or the lagging outcome, let's think about the daily habit, which is a leading metric. And if we, in that example, become the type of person that is healthy, the outcome is inevitable. Instead of like trying to think about, I want to lose 10 pounds, we just become through habits, become the person that goes to the gym and eats healthy and the outcome is inevitable. Uh, you could take another goal like business growth or finance. Let's say like finance. You could say, I want to save X amount of dollars by the time I retire, right? Well, if you only focus on that, you're you're never going to hit it. What, what you need to do is say, every time I get paid, I'm going to take 10% of my, my income and I'm going to put it here into this savings or investment account or whatever it is you're doing with your money. Um, and this isn't financial advice. I'm just talking about the habit here. So instead of saying like, you know, in, in 10 years and 20 years, I'm, I want to have X, we say every time I get a paycheck, every time I get paid, whether from a bonus or salary or whatever it is, every single paycheck that comes into my personal account, this percentage is going to go into reinvestment in this other thing. And then the outcome of becoming wealthy, becoming financially independent is inevitable, not because of the goal, but because of the habit. So uh, that's my mindset uh, uh, hack for you guys today. And, um, you know, think about that. See how you can apply that to, you know, your your business, your life, your relationships, uh, whatever. I think it's, um, you know, that book for me was one of the most empowering books and life-changing books I've read. Uh, and I hope that concept helps you guys. Um, so the main topic we want to talk about today um, is uh, a concept, causation versus correlation. Um I get a bit nerdy with you guys today. Um, sorry, I, I am kind of a, a data and marketing nerd, so hang with me a little bit. Um, yeah, correlation and causation are two things that often get confused. And when they do, they lead to people making really bad decisions. And business growth, um, marketing, sales, operations is all about making the best decisions we can with the information that we have. And I think I see a lot of times, especially smaller companies, looking at the wrong data and making the wrong call at the wrong time. So I'm going to dive in and talk about exactly what that is in a second. But before I do, uh, talk about a little bit of backstory and, and how I got here um, and why I think this is so important. So, um, uh, you know, 23 years ago now, uh, give or take, I... Um, 
I joined the Air Force and my role in the Air Force was um, called a crew chief, which is sort of akin to like a superintendent on a job site, um, on a home construction or commercial construction job site. Um, my job was to know a little bit about every role that happened, uh, enough to be able to coordinate, enough to be able to troubleshoot. Uh, and specifically, I want to talk about the troubleshooting part. So one of the things that the, the uh, good old military did for me is they put me through a bunch of advanced troubleshooting classes. And I find them I found them really fascinating and they helped develop the person I was then and the person I am now. Um, we would sit around in these classes and, in, you know, at this point I have already gone through a lot of foundational training. I learned all the electrical guidance, uh, you know, fuel systems, pneumatic systems, all these different systems that are on the plane. I had already gone through like, you know, basically a condensed college course uh, for all of this stuff tons and tons of books, huge stacks of books and went through all of that, had this foundational knowledge and then get to my base. And they're like, Hey, we need to get more training specifically this troubleshooting training. And we would go to these big classrooms and they had these huge tables and they would bust out all these aircraft schematics. And for those of you who don't know, there's just miles and miles and miles of electrical cables and hydraulic lines and all these things inside of, uh, uh, aircraft, there's redundant systems for everything. Uh, the, the amount of systems inside of any aircraft, even simple aircraft is mind numbing. And so the aircraft I was on was not small. Uh, it was pretty large and the amount of systems here, uh, were incredible. There were tons and, um, they would basically put us in these scenarios and say, Hey, this plane just had X symptom, whatever it was. And they would say, your job in the next 30 minutes is to take a look at all of these schematics and tell me what's wrong with the plane. And so we ended up having to develop, we were taught and then had to further develop inductive and deductive reasoning. And I'm not going to talk about that too much today, but um, uh, if you don't know what that is, do a Google search. That's also a fun rabbit hole to go down. Um, and basically through reasoning skills, you could say, hey, this thing, because of this symptom, it could be one of these 10 things, but because this other thing didn't happen, it can't be this one because this happened. It's not that one. And eventually you pigeonhole down into a funnel process where you end up with, this is the only thing that with that symptom and only that symptom could be. And then you know what part to change, you know what system to update, you know what thing to do on that plane to make it safe and flyable again. And, you know, this, that job was kind of interesting because it's, it's, um, you know, um, any aircraft, you know, has a lot of responsibility. Anybody that does that, you make a wrong move, people can die. It's, you know, pretty serious stuff. But also, you know, my plane was uh, assigned to the Special Operations Command. So there were real world missions with real implications of supporting our own troops with those planes. Uh, so it's pretty important. I really enjoyed the job and I really enjoyed how it taught me to think. And I think that, you know, as I've gone forward into marketing, and advertising and sales, those skill sets have helped me make really good decisions, really good marketing and advertising decisions. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So with that said, let's jump into causation versus correlation and talk about what it means and how using it correctly can make you make better decisions in your business. So let's start with the definition. What is causation? And what is correlation? So correlation is when two things happen at the same time. Um, I was reading this article and um, it was talking about like, you know, correlation versus causation fallacies, which is when you think something is linked, but it's not. So there was one, it was like the divorce rate in Maine versus the amount of diaper sales in the United States. And if you look at that graph over time, they went up and down together. Those data points mirrored each other. They looked almost identical. And it, it, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that diaper sales and divorce rates don't really align, um, at least not from the US to Maine. Um, so it's, it's kind of comical. And there's some articles on that that show you all sorts of random data points. You'll see these two data points that have, you know that as you know any common sense person knows that these things have nothing to do with each other. But the data looks similar. And that's what correlation is. Correlation is when 
want, uh, two or more data sets move at a similar scale over a period of time. In other words, you know, two stocks go up and down at the same time, two statistics go up and down at the same time at a same or similar rate. That's called correlation. Causation is when one thing is provably directly caused another thing to happen. In other words, A happened and therefore B happened. You know, um, I drove recklessly and ran through a stoplight and then caused an accident. That's a causation. Um, correlations are all over the place. And the, the risk here and the business side, especially when it comes to marketing, sales, operation, business data, is we can see a number in our business going up or see a number in our business going down. And then we can see another thing that's going up or down. And we think that one is causing the other. And it's not necessarily true. Um, most of the younger business people that um, I have as clients, people that are less experienced, tend to make emotional decisions, very emotional. And they're very quick to make rash decisions like, oh, this marketing didn't work. Oh, that sales process didn't work. I lost profit on this job. And all of a sudden, they change policies and change procedures and change everything not understanding that the call they just made was a correlation and not a causation, right? So I'm going to tell a, a quick example um, and, and uh, you know, kind of talk about an example I heard recently and what I think was wrong with it and, and what I think the better outcome would have been. So uh, a Facebook friend of mine um, was talking about how his paint business had um, was getting low website visits and low, um, conversions or leads because of a, um, a data point, right? Specifically that searchers in his area were searching for his services less. And so that's a data point that all of those could be measured. You can look at your you know, website analytics and see that traffic is down, impressions are down, leads are down. That's a feelable metric in any business. Um, you can also look at tools and see like, hey, like I can look at like Google Trends and see search volume over keywords over a period of time. You can also do it with other tools, other paid and, and other free tools. But the point here is that he took a metric and, you know, his leads were down from, S from an SEO standpoint and he took a metric and asserted with utmost confidence that this one thing is the thing that caused this other thing. So A caused B. And when I, when I looked at it, I immediately had a, a, a half a dozen different questions and asked them about different things. And after the conversation, we ended up figuring out together, him, him looking at some things and me looking at some things and presenting some ideas and other things for him to consider. We actually found out that the data point that he thought was causing the lack of leads wasn't the data point that was actually causing the lack of leads. It was something else. And so that's my big takeaway here is, you know, when we look at something just because two things happened at the same time doesn't mean that one thing caused another. And as smart business owners that we want to be, it makes sense to take a beat and to dig into the data and, you know, look at not just the data here, but look at other factors around it and see if we can figure out what is actually going on, what is actually causing the change. Um, and there's a number of examples. I mean, we could sit here and, and list tons of examples, but, you know, one thing would be, you know, like that example with, hey, um, this one data point is down, therefore my leads are down, right? So you could say, Hey, my cost on this one thing went up, my leads are down, therefore one caused the other. Well, those, those might just be something as simple as like intermediate symptoms. Maybe the real cause was, you know, a pixel setting or a form setting, or it's like loads of other things that can happen inside of a marketing and sales cycle. So anytime the, the big takeaway here is anytime something goes wrong or right, we need to spend the amount of time needed to correctly determine causation. Um, and I know that can be tricky and there's no one rule that you can use to apply for every scenario. Um, you know, there's a lot of 
logic and things that you would need to do. But I would say the big takeaways is just don't act emotional. Don't go with a gut reaction. Just assume that's it and move on and make a determination for your business. What you should do is say, hey, this thing happened. I think it may be this one thing, but I need to give myself time. I want to take a look at not just this data point that I think it might be, but let's take a look at some other data points around it. Let's take a look at other systems that are touching this one system. So going back to my Air Force example, you know, you might come with like um, uh, a symptom, like maybe a light went out on a plane, right? Light bulb's not like going to, you know, crash the plane, but it could prevent visibility and some other things. So they say, hey, this light went out. Your first instinct, everybody's first instinct is a light bulb went out, right? But that's not always the case. Um, you could even test the light bulb and go, oh, that works. Well, then it must be some other thing. But it could be like a relay of a safety switch with a circuit breaker with a bad wire. Like it could be five layers deep that cause a light bulb not to turn on. Because the the systems around the aircraft have so many interconnected systems. Like the hydraulic systems are connected to the electronic systems are connected to the pneumatic systems are connected to the fuel systems. Like just about everything talks to everything else through a series of relays and circuit breakers and computers and all these other things. And sometimes something that's very, very obvious, at least at first glance, you're like, that's wrong. This must be the problem. This must be what it is. When you really dig, sometimes it's not. And those assertions, when you make those assertions in business, they can lead you to make really, really wrong decisions and go really, really down a bad path. And so I would say that, you know, when you're thinking about marketing, when you're thinking about sales, even when you think about operations and profits and finance and everything else in your business, every time something good or bad happens, your, one of your responsibilities is to note what's working and what's not in your business. But I would just challenge you to, instead of creating a instinct, gut, emotional reaction that could be based on an implied correlation, that you take a second, you take a beat, dig a little bit deeper and make sure that A caused B and not A and B were just happening at the same time. So in that example, you know, um, my buddy, um, you know, he wanted, you know, the, the good part is, is he wanted to make change and he was looking for a problem and, you know, he was trying to affect a positive outcome for his company where he went wrong is he went with a gut reaction and the gut reaction ended up proving not right. And where he could have went better is by saying, Hey, this thing is down. Let me give it an hour, two hours, whatever it takes. Let me dive in and look at other data sources around it. Maybe ask a couple peers, hey, this one thing in my business is down. I think it might be this. What else could it be? Is there anything else that could be affecting this? Something I'm not thinking about, something I haven't decided or been aware of, um, decided to wrong work, been aware of something I just completely overlooked, didn't notice that could be connected. And so sometimes... You know, just giving yourself a little more time or asking for help or even just Google and YouTube searches can help you associate different things in your business that may make um, some better changes. So that's that's it for today's episode, guys. Um, you know, we talked about um, correlation is the when A and B move together and causation is when you can determine that A absolutely caused B to happen. and the goal here is to take a beat so that we can make better decisions so that we can affect better change for our businesses, for our employees, our customers, ourselves, and everyone else around us. So that's it for this episode. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're looking for help growing your contracting business, I invite you to join my free community. In there, we go live with amazing trainings, share resources and downloads. Plus, you get free help from me and from peers. That link is down below to join and we'll see you in the next video.